My name's Tom Barnes. I'm a commercial portrait photographer specialising in music work. Over my 10 years as a full-time pro, I've shot some of the biggest bands in the world and worked for all of the major record labels and shot covers for plenty of magazines. Today for CVP, I'm going to be running through uh, the Leica M240 with a 35mm f2 Summicron and a 50mm 1.4 Summi Lux. Um, it's a, an interesting camera, for sure. Um, it's very, very different to uh, anything I've used before. Uh, I normally use uh, medium format systems and DSLRs, um, which are normally through the lens. So the um, the lens, what you're seeing through the viewfinder is what you're going to get through the lens. With uh, this Leica, it is one of the only, if, if not the only, rangefinder, digital rangefinder system. Um, that means that the lens and viewfinder aren't actually connected. Uh, so what you see through the viewfinder is not what you see through the lens. Uh, to focus it, you match up two little squares. Um, but I'll go into the practicalities of it in a bit. It's, uh, it's a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor. So this is one of their first CMOS uh, sensors. The M9 was the last of the CCD. Uh, and the M9P, obviously. Um, but with this one, they obviously wanted to step it up and achieve the higher ISO and, um, and things like that. The advantages that come with a CMOS sensor. I know a lot of people were worried about the, um, the Leica look being lost in the transition from CCD to CMOS. Um, but actually now having spent a couple of weeks with the camera, I really don't think that's the case. Um, I will be going to Covent Garden Market, showing you how quiet and unobtrusive the camera is, uh, and just running you through a little bit of my favourite bits and not so favourite bits about the whole system. Back to the beginning. Obviously Leica have just celebrated their 100 years, and they have put in to all their cameras quite a um, large level of effort when it comes to the packaging. So we'll get these lens cases out of the way. And let me just show you, so this is the box that your Leica M system will arrive in. Um, you will see this after you've lifted it out of another cardboard box to protect this cardboard box. And then when you open it up, rather excitingly, the whole thing falls apart like this and you are kind of left with the Leica box. Now, this is all magnetic clasps, and when you open it up, unlike most cameras that you get nowadays from Canon, Nikon, Sony, all that kind of jazz, that are just cardboard boxes, this one has actually put some effort into the packaging. When you, when you open it up, you do feel like you're part of an experience. So you have the, um, the camera box that obviously sits in the top, and then rather fun, you have um, shelves. So you have little pull-out shelves which have your chargers and your, your caps and your instructions and stuff like that. And it all um, folds in rather neatly with magnetic clasps. So for me, kind of as soon as I kind of picked it up and realised, well, kind of had a look at this, I kind of felt that the whole, the whole thing, you're kind of buying into an experience, you're not just buying a camera you're buying into a whole, um, let's put that there, you're buying into a whole experience rather with this camera. Um, you get the, the feel of the camera, which is incredibly different to anything I've used before. It's very solid, it feels very heavy. Um, it, but it's not too heavy, it's a comfy heavy. Um, and without sounding too much like a fanboy, it is, rather special to use, but you'll, you'll see me kind of chuckling my way around Covent Garden in a bit. So this is it. This is what we're going to be talking about today. So this is the Leica M240. Uh, currently got a 35mm Summicron lens on it. Uh, it is a 24 megapixel CMOS sensor. Um, it has quite 
a decent ISO range, um, including push and pull modes for anyone who used to shoot film. It's quite neat. Um, as I've said already before, it's a rangefinder. Um, it's got a much improved screen on the back from the old M9 that I saw. Um, it is their kind of second uh, full frame sensor, the M9 being the first, the M8 being a crop sensor. And um, it is small. It is very, very small. If I show you it compared to a Nikon D800, you know, the D800 is considerably bigger, and that's before I've put a lens on the front. So the M240 is very, very small, very compact. Um, it is all black. Um, the M240P, which they've just announced, has actually lost the red dot, the Leica logo, on the front of the camera um, to make it kind of even more unobtrusive. Um, but there's no real heavy engraving. There's nothing on the top um, on the M240. The M240P, I think, does. Um, but, you know, overall, it's a very, very subtle camera. People, unless they know the red dot, um, aren't really going to take a second look at it. Which is, um, which is obviously why, over the years, they've become kind of a favourite of street photographers, travel photographers, and generally people who kind of need to get shots off without being noticed. Um, for me, I actually don't really tend to shoot a lot of street stuff. I tend to shoot kind of many studio lit, kind of, or like kind of lit portraits um, of musicians and kind of criminals and interesting kind of sorts like that. Um, but with this one... Uh, having had this, I actually kind of got inspired to uh, to go out and start shooting street photography. So we'll go out and see um, some of the stuff that I shot in Covent Garden Market, and we went in, over into Chinatown as well. Um, and we'll see some of that stuff. It was heavy rain as well, so you have to bear with us on that. Overall, ergonomics of the camera, it's, <laughs> it's quite heavy. Um, what they probably don't tell you is that most of these parts are actually machined out of brass. So it's still a very solid feeling camera. It probably weighs about the same as my D800 body, um, the whole thing with the lens. And it is, it's solid. When you, when you hold it, you know, you've actually got, you know, it's a, it's a good grip. It's very, it, you wouldn't think it was so comfortable to grip, but actually they put a nice little thumb groove in there. I have seen some people extend it from the hot shoe um, using a little bolt-on just to give them a bit more purchase. But overall, it feels very comfortable. It's very small, um, it feels quite neat, everything clicks in a very satisfying way. Um, it's all quite basic, but at the same time quite advanced. So the controls and everything are kind of what you need. You, you have kind of some more advanced settings in the menus. Um, but, you know, here you have your shutter speed, you have your ISO on the back, and you obviously control everything manually on the lens. Um, it's probably a good time to mention, actually we're going to talk about the lens very quickly, that it is a completely manual focus system. Um, normally what you do is you grip the camera, like so, and then you kind of use a knurl of your, or your knuckle in this um, kind of knurled grip area on the lens. Normally you just kind of stick your knuckle in there and then use that to focus. So actually, there's no kind of big arms or anything around there. It's all very subtle, all very controlled by fingertip. The, the focusing is very, very smooth. Um, and the aperture ring at the front of the lens clicks in a very satisfying way as well.
So these are the lenses that I'm going to be using. Um, I've always loved the 35mm uh, focal length. Um, I shoot with it all the time. I have uh, a Nikon DF, uh, or a Nikon DF, however you want to say it. Um, and I absolutely adore the 35mm on that. Um, but I also shoot a lot with a 50 as well. So I, when I was asked what I wanted to test it with, I said, oh, absolutely, I have to have the 35mm f2 and the 50mm 1.4. Um, so I'll quickly run you through the build quality on these things. Um, if you haven't seen the video of how Leica make their lenses, you really should. It's sort of fascinating. The level of detail that goes into each one and the, um, the level of precision is, um, is quite incredible. They're all hand finished and all inspected at various stages and stuff like that. And just how they work is, um, yeah, quite incredible. But they're very, very small lenses. You know, that, that is the, in the palm of my hand. You can see how small it is. Compare it to, um, oh, I actually don't have any other lenses, I'm using them all. Um, so it's very small, fits in the palm of my hand, and um, it's quite light as well, it's not too bad. Um, the 35mm f1.4 is quite a bit bigger, um, but uh, this is the f2 as I said, because it's just a, a great value, um, <laughs> very sharp, very sharp lenses. Um, the Leica lenses are renowned um, to be some of the best in the world. Um, having now shot with this, you know, you're always a bit sceptical about how these things are and stuff like that, but actually now having shot with this for a long time, or kind of a couple of weeks, I would say this is probably the best lens that I personally have ever used. I absolutely adore it. Um, the, just the general look of it um, is fantastic. I wish I had tried the 35mm 1.4, um, but for the time being, this has been absolutely brilliant. It's been a lot of fun to shoot with this. Uh, everything feels very clicky. Um, it, you know, it's very a reassuring click, and the focusing is literally the smoothest. It feels oil damped. I'm sure it is not, but it, it just feels incredibly, incredibly smooth. So, um, and actually, to be honest, when you look at it, it is a bit of a work of art. The um, you know all the all the numbers and stuff are are finished by hand, so they're painted by hand, and everything. And the, the whole thing is just is just a really neat bit of kit, really. So this is the 50mm 1.4, and um, this is quite a fun one because it has a built-in lens hood, which you don't really see so much anymore. Um, one thing that I would say about both of these lenses is that I wish the, that one actually does look metal, but I, I wish the, um, the focusing, whatever you would call it, the focusing aid here on the lens, I sort of wish that was plastic, uh, metal. It's plastic on this version. It does, I would say it's probably the only thing that really lets the overall build quality down. Um, when you look through these lenses, they are absolutely fantastic and still very small for a 50mm 1.4. Um, it's just a beautifully put together thing. And the pictures that come out of this are, um, are absolutely fantastic. One thing I should say about general Leica stuff is they don't focus quite as close as regular DSLRs. So I, there is a kind of a minimum, minimum focusing distance, I think if it's about 0 0.7, 0 0.75 on the 35mm f2, um, which for years I've been quite happily kind of getting about 30 centimeters away from my subject with the, um, with the DF. So that is a bit of a letdown. Um, but it's, 
incredibly sharp, quite lightweight, very small, quite fast, and obviously now you can boost the ISO um, up on the M240, uh, way, way more than you would have been able to on the M9. And um, yeah, overall, it's just a really neat pair of lenses, really. So quickly, while we're here, I'm going to run you through the things I do and don't like about the camera body. Um, I like how heavy it is. I've got quite big hands. I don't think uh, many people would find this too heavy. Um, it's it's very comfortable, I would consider. But it, it's got a it's got a weight of quality um, to it. I really like how everything's mechanical and everything clicks in a very satisfying way. Um, I would. I'm not really going to talk about the movie side of the camera. It shoots 1080 video, and you will get the obviously the look through these fantastic lenses and all that kind of malarkey. But actually, as far as a video camera goes, I don't think you would be wanting to use it for professional video. I very much doubt anyone who's going to be buying this camera is buying it for the video feature as well. So I would imagine the majority of people are going to be using it for stills. Um, I would prefer to see this thumb grip slightly maybe textured or just slightly come further out a little bit. I do every now and then, you know, um, slip off it slightly. Um, but overall, I'd say it's it's a decent feeling camera. I mean, I know they've changed it on the M240p, but I don't actually like the red dot on the front of the camera. That might be important for a lot of people, but I actually would have just preferred a completely clean black uh, front like the M240p. Um, what else? The menu system is a little basic compared to um, the things you might have come to expect from you know, the huge companies like Canon and Nikon. Um, but it does everything that you need to. And it's, it's a little bit slow, um, the overall usage of it. Um, it does have a very useful live view. So if you do want to kind of see what you're getting exactly through the lens, you can focus it like that. Um, which can be quite useful. Um, what I haven't talked about yet is the shutter, because I think I'll go more into that in a bit, but it is incredibly quiet. And that's it. So, incredibly, incredibly quiet, compared to the clatter that you normally get with a Nikon or the, with my medium format system, with the leaf shutter and stuff like that. That makes an absolute racket, whereas this is very subtle. You know, this is very, very quiet indeed. So, um, yeah, kind of plus points all round, really. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling really to find something that I don't like about the build quality and the general exterior. Um, I actually can't really think of a, anything that I really kind of don't like about this, um, about the, the form factor of the camera. It's very, very small, it's quite a nice weight. Um, it, the menus and the, the overall software are a little bit slow, um, but, but nothing that can't be lived with. Um, shooting is quite fast, put a fast card in it and it, it goes pretty well. Um, burst wise, I don't know what you're going to expect, probably so that's about 10 shots I think, which is probably more than you're ever really going to shoot in a burst um, with one of these anyway. Um, but still, I mean, I haven't got the fastest card in here either, so you'd probably be able to get a few more. Um, but that's not too bad. Um, like I said, the main thing I don't like is the Leica logo on the front, because I just think it, it, it's a bit bright compared to the overall thing, but I know they fixed that on the M240p. And um, you could always just stick some tape over it. I know a lot of people have done. Um, so, yeah, it's yeah, it's just a very neat, well-built comfortable camera, which you wouldn't actually think, if you look at the side profile of it, you would actually think that it would be um, uncomfortable, but it's it's not. It kind of fits in your hands in about the right kind of way. It just It just feels good.
so yeah, that was it. Basically, that is my review of the Leica M240. Um, the build is great. Um, the image quality is um, fantastic when you nail the focus. The focus does take a lot of time. Uh, not a lot of time, but it does take a bit of time to get used to it. Um, but when you do get used to it, especially on the wider lenses such as the 35, when you do get used to it, you can move very, very quickly with it. It's completely unobtrusive. The lens is attack sharp, even wide open. It feels very comfortable. It's quite a comfy weight. Um, overall, I would wholeheartedly recommend this camera. I think, um, for me, the lack of things like dual card slots would um, prevent me from using it for a commercial job. But for, um, well, as far as kind of a camera to take photographs and actually love and cherish, I think I'm going to put an order in, <laughs> which is, um, I'm very sorry, my dear wife. I, uh, I've been very patient, um, or you've been very patient with me buying various camera gear, and I, I had promised it was going to stop. Um, unfortunately, I think I have uh, found my next purchase. <laughs>